this video, I'd like to focus on how persuasion uh, comes through the media and how is it is used and enacted in the media and things we ought to be aware of as critical consumers of media when it comes to persuasion. So first of all, I'd like you to think about um, how much media do you take in? And how much thought do you put into uh, the media that you consume? Do you, do you just uh, kind of let it wash over you and take it for granted? Or are you really critical and, and thoughtful about what the intention is behind that, where that news is coming from, where the, the, the gatekeeping functions are in that media? You know, for most of us, it's probably on the lighter end of critical consumers. You know, it, it, we may give some thought to it, but probably not too terribly a great deal of thought about uh, about whether it's accurate about whether it's you know trustworthy and things like that we, we kind of get zoned into these particular areas of media and just become very trustful of it so um, uh, want to talk a little bit about that and how persuasion is a factor in those types of uh, in all media outlets really so let's start by defining media. What do we mean by the media? Media is the means of communication, such as radio, television, newspapers, magazines, and the internet that reach or influence people widely. The idea of media is that there's multiple channels, first of all, um, that, that's technically what media means. It's multiple mediums, mediums being channels. So it's just multiple ways that, that people can, can, can use to connect with a large audience. So media is concerned with having the broadest possible audience for their message. Okay. So that's what we're using to define media, meaning any types of uh, anything that would fit in that definition could be defined as a media. Right. So television, newspapers, again, the Internet, social media, even to a certain extent, could be defined as media if their intent is to reach a large number of people and they're using technology to do so. Uh, several media innovations have come come through over the years, um, starting with just the spoken word. I mean, the ability that we have the, to speak then um, followed shortly by the, the not really shortly, but followed by the written word really expanded our communication capabilities and, and our ability to reach people across broad distances and reach wider audiences. Um, that expanded even more when we got to the printed word. The invention of the printing press really was one of the just truly groundbreaking inventions uh, of all mankind, of, uh, of all human history, really. The ability that it gave people not only to, to spread their, their message more widely, but the ability of people to be literate and to, to have a direct connection to that, to that news with just the written word, there were still very few people who could read it was the, only the only really rich people and probably people educated for religious purposes were the, were the primarily the ones who could read. Um, so the vast majority of the human population was still illiterate, but with the printed word, um, the, the written word became more accessible to all kinds of people. So you had really this significant expanse of people being able to, to, identify things on their own to, to take in media on their own and and really to take this news in without the intermediary of having someone else having to tell them well this is what this says so we have the printed word which is a significant step forward then you have the electronic word coming through the radio and television and and uh, things like that um, we, but those were one way right we're still getting we're getting news we're getting information we're getting uh, things from the media there uh, but on a one-way basis we're not really able to contribute to that ourselves until you get into the interactive electronic word which was brought on really by the internet where we have the opportunity to be participative in these things right to be immediately participating in the, the take, taking in of this news and the disbursement of this news and the common commenting on this news and almost sort of the creation of this news ourselves through that interactive electronic word. Uh, so we have all kinds of media inventions that have taken place over human, the history of humankind to, to really, uh, to really showcase different types of media and uh, different opportunities that media presents and different ways of interacting with that media. So a couple of the uh, major uh, functions of the media though as we have it today um, we're going to discuss a couple of major functions that the media performs uh, and the first of which is what we call agenda setting function you know the the, the there's an old saying in in uh, in media criticism and things that the media doesn't tell us what to think the media tells us what to think about right the media doesn't tell us what to think but the media does tell us and influence what to think about. They decide what gets in front of us here. So they have this agenda setting function. They get to set the agenda in a way, right? So we need to keep in mind, though, that the purpose of the media is to make money. That's their goal for the most part. I mean, the, the goal of the media is to make money. And that's not a slam. 
Most of these are for-profit companies. We don't expect Walmart to just be totally altruistic, right? They're there to make money. And the same with Amazon and the same with Starbucks. They're there. And, and so the media is no different. Their purpose is to make money. So they do have a specific uh, outlook on these things and a specific uh, methodology behind these things because their intention is to make money. They do that in part through what they call gatekeepers. And the, this is where the agenda setting function comes in. The media acts as what we call gatekeepers for what information gets through. Now, these gatekeepers in, in you know, older history, for example, would have been, like I said, in, in the invent, with the advent of the written word, only a few people could read. So you look at things like religion and you had the massive centrality of power with the, with the priests and other religious leaders because they were the only ones who could actually read the Bible and really study it and understand it. And so they were the ones who could tell us Oh, this is what the Bible means here. And this is what the, we had. We just had to take their word for it and, and really kind of go along. Once you had the printed press, though, the printed word, people could start to read the Bible on their own. People could start to have their own interpretations. They didn't need that intermediary, didn't have that gatekeeping. The church didn't have to play that gatekeeping function anymore. Contemporary media does this as well, though, in a really strong way. They are gatekeepers of information. They determine uh, what goes out and what doesn't. Right? And they do this, they perform a number of gatekeeping functions. These gatekeepers do a variety of things. Um, first of all, for the most part, again, remembering that the media is there to make money, the gatekeepers, uh, first of all, tend to lean on the least objectionable programming. The programming that, that people are going to find the least offensive and, and that the most people are going to, it's going to have the broadest possible appeal, right? Um, so they're going to go after the least objectionable programming, which isn't necessarily to say the best programming or the most accurate programming or what have you. It's going to be the least objectionable. What's going to get the broadest audience for us here so that we can sell commercials, we can pull in more uh, advertisers because we have a large audience and so forth, right? So they're concerned with the least objectionable programming. Gatekeepers are also concerned with the known audience. Who's their audience? What do they know? Who are they selling to? Uh, and so they're going to put on programming and, and talk about stories that, that appeal to that particular audience, right? Not just to anybody and everybody. Gatekeepers go after who they know to be their audience and who they want to, to draw in. Gatekeepers are also looking for the ability to deliver in sound bites. They don't want massive, you know, long stories. What they want is something that they can tell an audience in 20 to 30 seconds. You know, looking for that sound bite, something to hook the audience, something to make it memorable, and then looking for the next, you know, the next big thing to come along. They're looking for the ability to deliver the news and deliver this information, deliver everything else in sound bites. They're also looking for a dramatic quality of the message, right? They want something that has dramatic video or, or, or photographs to go with it. That's something that's going to sensationalize this and really make it stand out to the audience. And right. So they're looking for the dramatic quality of this message. Right? So gatekeepers aren't necessarily, again, looking for the best story or the story that the audience needs to know. They're looking for these things that their audience wants to see and will pull in the broadest possible audience so that they can sell advertisements and, and make money. That's their whole purpose here. So in doing so, they set the agenda, though. They decide, you know, what, what stories are going to be told and which ones aren't. So we need to remember that, that there's an agenda setting function there. Right? There's also a role modeling function. Uh, so we have the media presents these roles to us, what we call assigned roles and assumed roles. Uh, assigned roles um, are, the, are the ones that media assigns to us. And, you know, uh, the portrays uh, sports loving men as big, tough guys and not very smart and so forth. Right. And then assumed roles, the ones we take on ourselves. So uh, it has this role modeling function. It tells us you know, in large way, it, it, it expresses our, our culture and how we ought to behave, what ought to be normal and so forth, right? As far as, as far as the TV is concerned or as far as this media is concerned. So it presents this role modeling function for us. We also need to remember that there's uh, frequently, more frequently than we'd like to think about, there's news manipulation and persuasion. So the, the, the people use the news to manipulate stories. And, and again, this is all about drawing in an audience and, and boosting ratings and so forth. But, um, but it's, there's some news manipulation and persuasion that goes on in different forms. First of all, keep in mind that, that we have limited news sources. If you look at your newspaper, for example, almost all the stories in there, uh, except for a few locals maybe, are going to be from the AP or UPI or Reuters. And it's going to be from one of these major news services. So you already have this narrowed down function of, 
these gatekeepers at these three institutions deciding really what's going to be told because, you know, 75% of your newspaper is going to come from these sources. And a lot of your, your even cable news, for example, is sourced from other news sources, right? Which are, you know, so there's, they're, they're using those as sources. And, and so uh, we do have a limited number of news sources in some ways. So, so we're not getting the full story necessarily in that way. There's also limited time dedicated to the news. Right. So we just, we just don't spend much time there. People are willing to spend what I remember when I was younger, the evening news was a big deal and it was an hour long. Right? People would sit for an hour. My dad would sit for an hour every night and watch the evening news. Then people got, you know, their attention spans got a little shorter and now we want the evening news in a half an hour and better yet, let's go watch something on, uh, you know, a major news network, cable news network that repeats stuff every 10 minutes. So we don't have to watch for a full hour. We can get everything we need in 10 minutes, right? We are dedicating less and less time to, to this news ourselves. And the newscasters are dedicating less and less time to, to different stories and things in, in, in favor of repeat repetition and, and, uh, and keeping the audience interested and engaged in that way. Right. We also have the blurring of news with opinion and entertainment. Right. There's a blurring of news with opinion and entertainment. You know, Fox News is a great example. They have their news side, what they would call their news side. Uh, and then they have their opinion and entertainment. And CNN has the same. They have their news stuff. Usually during the day is news stuff, news, you know, news gathering functions and things like that. But then the evening primetime hours, it's more about opinion and, and entertainment. Right. So no better place is there, is there a good example of this than Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity has nothing to do with the news. I hate to tell you, I, a Fox fan or not, I don't care who you are. And, and he would probably admit this if he was being honest as much as anybody, he is not about the news. He is about shaping opinion, sharing his opinion, providing entertainment, um, pulling in viewers. He's interested in, in the numbers and the statistics and, and, uh, and, and viewership, right? Um, but he's not interested in news. He's not a news gathering person. His organization does not gather news. They pull in news stories from other places and then they give their opinion about them. Right. But most people don't recognize the difference. We don't see the difference between a, a legitimate and traditional news organization where there's news gathering going on and they're vetting sources, they're vetting information and just something that, uh, that somebody pulls off the, a random source on the internet that has not been verified at all, has not been legitimized at all, uh, but it gets legitimized because this person says it is right. This person says that, that, uh, that it's legitimate. So, but we have this blurring of news with opinion and entertainment. Yeah. We also have these common manipulations that take place in, uh, in news organizations and, and newscasting, uh, and especially now with social media and things becoming, um, you know, user identified news. Um, we have times when the news, news stories are just ignored for whatever reason, either because it's not glamorous enough or because it, you know, has a contrary uh, feeling to what the, the network would like to put out there or because they're favoring a sponsor. They don't want to share information about a sponsor that's going to reflect in a negative light. So, um, so they, they don't share the news story for that reason. They uh, tend to gravitate toward pseudo events, which are, you know, not really news, not things that are happening, but things that are pre-planned, things that um, we have a known outcome here, but we know it's also going to be dramatic and things so, uh, and appealing to people. So we have this focus on pseudo events and then just in general bias. I mean, just a, just a general bias um, that news organizations can have now. Uh, again, blurring the lines between news and opinion here, but, uh, but you know, we have Fox News, which is clearly a conservative news outlet. Uh, MSNBC, which clearly a liberal news outlet. CNN, which tends to lean a little bit to liberal, but is more in the middle than the other two. So, but, but they all have their biases, both verbal and nonverbal biases that they, that they present as part of their newscasts. And, and so we need to be aware of that. In general, we need to understand that persuasion is prevalent in the news, that it's not just a straight out, you know, fact sharing function that there's, and so we need to be skeptical. We need to be looking at the news with critical eyes and critical ears and really um, understand that what is happening here with, in terms of persuasion manipulation within the media. Okay. If you have any questions about this related to persuasion in the media or anything else related to persuasion, uh, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. I'd be happy to respond to you via email and discuss this with you there. Uh, in the meantime, be vigilant, be critical consumers of the media and recognize persuasion uh, where and when it comes, even if it comes through a quote unquote news organization.